This is Professor Fred Kennedy at Diablo Valley College in Pleasant Hill, California. Today I'm going to show you how to debug a 32-bit assembly language program using the Visual Studio 2008 debugger. You have to be, I already have a program loaded in here, and you have to be running it in order to display certain debugging windows. I'm going to start my program running and execute it one line at a time by hitting F10 on the keyboard. And we can see the yellow arrow here, which is where execution is paused. And if I hit F10 again, this line of code will be executed. But the first thing we want to do is set up our debug environment. We need some debug windows. So if I click on debug windows, and here's a bunch of windows I can display. These options are only available if you're running your program. If you're not running your program, you won't see these options. It's always nice to have a memory window available and you can select from four different memory windows. You, can, you could display four different areas of memory at the same time. Now we'll just select memory one, which I actually already have over here on the right. And it doesn't show any values here because we need to put in a memory address. Uh, you can drag a memory window wherever you like. You can put it down here um, as part of the tab if you like. So you can click on it and it's down here. If you select the memory window one and it's down here and you want it over here where I had it, you can drag it from here by clicking on the name and put it back here on the right. With You can put it wherever you like with, by selecting one of these arrows here. I like it right here, which is where I'm going to put it. It's a little too wide, so I can narrow it. Also, we may want to display the registers. So you could select the registers window down here, which I already have uh, displaying the registers down here. And if you want to display the flags, you right click on the register window and select flags. You can also right click on the, on the register window and select segments and any of these other registers you want to display like floating point registers. Now I'm getting ready to put this hex number into copy this hex number into EBX and we'll see EBX turn to red down here. I'll hit F10 to step one more time and we see that EBX has turned red which means it's changed and our hex number is now in EBX and that's kind of handy. We can also display a watch window. Windows, watch, we can have four different watch windows. I'll just select one here which I already have as a tab down here and you can actually drag your registers to the watch window. I already have EBX here I can drag down EAX and ANUM is a variable I defined in the data section up here. You can drag and I'll drag down BNUM to the watch window and it'll show what's displayed there. Uh, this is displayed in hex. If you wanted it to display in decimal just right click and clear this hexadecimal display. Now it will be in decimal. So now we're displaying the memory window here. And we can, you can also set breakpoints and run to a breakpoint. Suppose I want to run to this line of code down here. I just right click on it, breakpoint, insert breakpoint, and we see a red dot here. And if I hit F5, I will run, execution will run to the breakpoint. And we see the yellow arrow on top of the red dot, which is where execution is paused. Um, if there's an area of code you want to run to, but you don't want to set a breakpoint, you can actually just right click on it and say run to cursor and it will run to where the cursor is, which is where, where you right clicked and execution will pause there. Um, to show you what how the memory window works, I'm putting the memory, uh, the address of the variable bnum into bx here move EBX offset BNUM will move the address of the variable BNUM into EBX. So I'm going to run to cursor here again. And now I'm going to step one more time with F10. And now an EBX is the address 
of B num. Now if I drag EBX to the memory window, it contains the address of B num, so we should see B num displayed here. And there it is, uh, B1. And there it is, B1, B num stores B1. Um, this window over here, the solution window, you can actually auto hide, which would give you more space here. This pin here, if you put your cursor over, it says auto hide, and if you click on it, then that window goes away. But then if you put your cursor over this little thing that says Solution Explorer here, the window redisplays. If we want to stop debugging, we say debug, stop debugging, and that's about all there is to it.